تبارك الله رب العالمين الحمد لله الحمد لله الذي جعل ذكره طمأنينة للقلوب وجلاء لها نارين الذنوب ومطردة لوسواس الخناس المكذوب والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد الداعي إلى كل فعل محبوب وأمر مطلوب وعلى آله وأصحابه المقتفين سبيله على خير أسلوب أما بعد فيقول رب تبارك وتعالى في كتابه المنزل أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا أيها الذين آمنوا اذكروا الله ذكرا كثيرا وسبحوه بكرة وأصيلا هو الذي يصلي عليكم وملائكته وملائكته ليخرجكم من الظلمات إلى النور وكان بالمؤمنين رحيما تحيتهم يوم يلقونه سلام وعد لهم أجرا كريما صدق الله العظيم الله سبحانه وتعالى in his revealed word says O ye who believe remember him remember Allah with much in abundance and exalt him morning and afternoon. And it is he who confers blessings upon you, and his angels ask him to do so, that he may bring you out of darkness into light, and ever he is to believers merciful. Their greeting, the day they meet him will be peace, salam, and he has prepared for them a noble reward. Continuing in our series on building concentration in Salah, building, improving the quality of your Salah, today is our 34th lesson. Last week we spoke about the need to avoid distractions. We talked about attention deficit, not only among children but in adults. And living as we do in a world where minds are in a persistent daze and people are locked away. People are locked away from all the natural flow and coherence that is need, that the mind needs to settle. I told you about the need to have 14 minutes to settle in a thought and on average we are interrupted every 10 to 12 minutes and that leaves the mind in a daze we are unable to focus we talked about Allah warning about this about people the people who have not understood the message are the people who think that they are understanding the message the people who think that they are listening but in fact while listening as the Quran says that they are listening but they are listening for entertainment they're listening to be entertained and to enjoy what is being said rather than listening to practice, listening to obey, listening to act upon the guidance that you receive. That the hearts are in a state of stupor, it's distracted, it's, go, it's incoherent, it's lost its flow, it's lost its direction. And sadly, that is the nature of our modern man, is that because of the devices we carry that interrupts our consciousness on this regular basis, interrupts our ability to focus and concentrate. And salah is one of those places where we were meant to focus our attention such that it anchors the entire mind and heart in our day-to-day -day activities in the world going into going through our day-to-day -day mundane activities in the world we're supposed to be influenced by our salah our life in salah should be our life out of salah should have been like our life in salah 
In salah, we are in total obedience to Allah. Everything that Allah wants us to do at that point, our eyes are focusing where Allah wants it to focus. Our hands are in the place where Allah wants, us, wants, wants our hands to be. Our entire body, heart and mind and everything should be in accordance with the obedience of Allah. And so it is for our life out of salah that it should be the influence of salah upon our lives. But sadly, what has happened? It's the reverse is that we bring the life of the mundane, the life of play, the life of work, the life of children, the life of excitement, the life of entertainment, all into our salah. And how do we do this? We do this by mental activity in salah. We are unable to focus, and this is the problem. So we went through this long series of discussions about the need to develop love as in qurb. And... Qurb, the believer is closest to his Lord when he is in sajda, and that is a mark of love. And when you are in love, then you have fear, and that's what that was the sixth proof of fear that I gave you last week was fear of losing it, and one of and fearing the losing of love in three degrees. The first is the one of i'rad, which is the turning away that Allah turns away from us, and this is something that we should fear. Just as we are, our hearts are turned in all directions when we are standing in prayer. And I gave you the example of the phone being at our ears until we reach the door of the mosque and then it continues to beep through throughout the time when we are here. It's on silent. Even when, it, even when we are in salah, it's beeping silently. And that is drawing our attention away from what we are supposed to be doing. We are supposed to be focused. And here is... A transition now. We are moving now from sajda. We are moving from sajda into jalsa. When you get up and you've completed your two sajda, these two sajda, as the ulama have reflected on it, they say that it is a reminder that look to the earth. You are putting your face on the earth. This earth from which waminha khalaqnakum. It is from this earth that Allah has created you. And he will brings you out of it and then he puts you back into it and then you will come out. Tarat and Ukhra. So you're in each in this double sajda that you're doing, there's a reminder that I am for, that Allah created me from this earth. And he's brought me out and I'm going back and he will come out. And I will have to come out in such that at the end of my life on earth I'll be put in the earth and then taken out. But then you go into sajda. And it's this transition now we are at this juncture. This juncture of moving from sajda into jalsa, into sitting. Now what happens at the point of sitting? And those of you who are parents would know, would have the experience of taking your children to some fun activity. And halfway through the activity, they stop and say, so what are we doing next? Because they are unable to enjoy. The children now have become so accustomed to being entertained continuously that in the middle of their ability to enjoy the moment, the fun activity, you're in the park and they say, what, halfway through it, what are we doing next? And we laugh at this, but that is exactly the, exactly the thing that happens to us adults in Salah. When we reach the point of Jalsa, when we're sitting now to do Tashahud, where is the mind at that point? Where does it get engaged with? It starts to race ahead that I'm going to go out, I'm going to park my car, I'm going to get my car, I'm going to speak, my, I, have, I have this to say to my wife, I have this to say to that worker, I have this. The planning starts just as we've brought half of the world back into salah throughout. When we, halfway through the salah, and especially when we sit down and we are reciting that bit of that tashahud, at-tahiyyat, then through that we are not conscious of what we are reciting because our mind is now raced forward into what we are going to do after salah. And this is what shaitan comes and does. He, he, corrupts, he, he corrupts the important, one of the most important aspect of your salah. The ulama have said that it is as if, if you look at the composition of salah, you will see that it is arranged such as when a person enters in the court of a king, he has to bow. He has to show deference 
And then he sings the praise. Then he states the greetings. And then he says words of reference. Or words of reverence. He says, long live the king. But he has to do. And it is as if the remainder, the, all the bowing, the sajda, the ruku, the reciting, was all a preparation for tahiyat. Because tahiyat is the greeting. It's the singing of, it's the saying of the praises of Allah. That was, that is such an important aspect of you, of the salah. That the Sahaba said that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to teach us a tahiyat kama yu'allimuni al-Qur'an, suratan min al-Qur'an. He used to place their hand, he used to place their hands between his two hands and this is how he used to teach. He used to place in order to increase the attention of them and to show affection. He would take their hands and place it between his hands like this and, and recite and teach them Qur'an. So that it would stick in their minds. Because Rasulullah's touch was amazing. He would touch the Sahaba. Once a Sahaba, he touched the Sahaba in his chest. And he said, I immediately profused with sweat all over. I started to perspire. And something opened up in front of me. فَكَأَنِّي أَنظُرُ إِلَى اللَّهِ فَرَقًا said like, as if I'm seeing Allah. This, that just by the touch of Rasulullah. So he used to keep... Take their hands and hold it in between his hand to teach them Quran. But this is this dua, the dua of tahiyyat. He did the same. He did the same. And this is the, the hadith of Ibn, uh, Abdullah ibn Mas'ud radiallahu anhu qal. Allamani Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa kaffayya bayna, bayna kaffay. And my hands, my kaff, wa kaffi bayna, bayna kaffay. Uh, as if he was teaching me Quran. That is the level of the importance of this as this part of your salah. Because you're indulging in the salutation. It is Jalsatil Abd. It is it has both Hayya and love, which is position, form and words. When you move into that part, but what happens to us at that portion? We're thinking about, we're, we become so engrossed in what we're going to do next after the salah. Where are we going to run off to? Who are we going to meet? And what are we going to do next? That we do not even remember the words of what we recite. It, it flows automatically in our mind and we have no concept of what we say. And that is a dereliction of your duty. It is a haq. There is hukuk in this. There's rights. There's right of Allah in that tahiyya. There's right of Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. There's right of Salihin, Muslims, the Malaika. All of those rights are fulfilled in a tahiyyat and we'll go through them. First and foremost, in order to draw the mind, in order to pin the mind down so that you are in the moment and you are not racing away out of the masjid even though you haven't left yet, the first and foremost thing is to Ponder on the meaning of what you're actually saying. Knowing, ponder, what am I actually saying? If a person goes into a court in front of a king and says, Oh, you're a great king and you are a beautiful, you long live the king and the king, the majesty, and, but his face is turned this way. Oh, long live the king. And, long, and his face is turned all in all different directions. Would that be seen as respectful? It wouldn't. It's the same with Allah. Allah sees our heart. So we are saying at tahiyyatulillah, but our hearts are outside the masjid planning what we will do next. How would that f appear in front of Allah? What would Al Allah is seeing us through and through? He is saying, yes, you have your face here, but his heart is already in the car. His heart is already halfway down the street. His heart is already at his office. He's this is the time to be in the moment. Because as I said, there is hukuk attached to this. This is, uh, this salah was given to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam where, where it was made for in Mi'raj when in, in Hina Usriya the, uh, there's clear hadith about this in Mi'raj and there is some hadith that has become famous but there is no um, sanad for it uh, that, that this conversation actually happened in, in Jannah but the fact is that salah itself the mi'raj, the physical mi'raj of Rasulullah sallam, the ascension was in a, one of the rewards that Rasulullah sallam said, one of the bounties that he got was he got salah. And Allah made it compulsory for 50 times a day. 50 times. 
So with one salah, we are, we are praying one salah and think we have done great. In fact, it was comp it, the compulsion of it is actually 50. But Allah is accepting one as 10. So every time we every time we pray one salah, Allah is accepting. He says, khamsin. When we pray five, we get khamsin. We get 50. This is, this is the, the reward. We get the reward for it. But it is mi'raj al-mu'min. We are to be, we, at that moment, our hearts and minds should transcend, should rise up. But this, these dua, this dua, at-tahiyyat, that when we are moved up from such to now, and we are in this jalsa, first and foremost, we have to ponder the position that we are in. This is known as jalsa al abd bayna yadai sayyidihi. The sitting, that sitting position is the sitting position of a slave in front of his master. That is the slave of humility. You're sitting, so that should be the first aspect of recognizing where you are and what you're doing. Is just, and, now, and the second is the words because Rasulullah said, Udu'u Allah wa antum muqinuna bil ijabati. Call, make dua. When you make dua, be absolutely certain in your mind of the response from Allah but how are you to do so if you do not know what you're saying if it runs on your mouth and your, you're running scripts like an automated machine but there is no co cognition there's no comprehension of it you have no sense of what you're doing your mind is occupied elsewhere it's gone out of the mosque already because we're in tahiyyat if we see this as oh I'm just finishing off then this is what shaitan comes and tells you but here if shaitan comes and makes you feel that, look, I'm just finishing off my salah, I'm just doing this, then you have lost, as I said, hukuk, you have lost great reward and you have lost an important, a crucial aspect of your salah. And the first and foremost is haqqullah. Haqqullah. This is the right of Allah. That Allah now has set in the salah something, a right for him. And the right for him is that you should sit there as a slave and... Salute, give greeting, give or sing Allah's praises and reverence with the best words there is. The Sahaba, before this was given, the Sahaba used to say, Assalamu ala Allah wa salamu ala Israfil wa Jibreel wa Mikael. They used to say salam on Allah and salam on, the, on various prophets by name, name and naming, naming the angels. And Rasulullah said, No, 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 you don't do this. This is how I've been taught to do it. This is how you have to do it. You have to say, At-tahiyyatu lillahi wa salawatu wa tayyibatu. I say this, do I know what it means? In order for you to be in the moment and enjoy and feel that presence and recognize that you are in front of my, in front of my, the creator, the one in whom, in front of whom I will have to stand on the day of judgment. I'm saying these words. These words have been chosen for me. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam taught the Sahaba as he taught the Qur'an. Taught them these words as he taught the Qur'an. That, so what, are the, what do these words mean? at So let's take the first one. at Tahiyyatun is a combination of several meanings. Lots of meanings it means. Every king in this world has his own unique word of reverence, his sentence of reverence. Some people say his majesty, long live the king, his greatness, his this, his that, is in this world. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is over and above all of these. So every possible word of greatness, every possible sal salutation that you can have, all of it is for Allah. So the word that you're using now is no longer singular. What is it? It's not tahiyyatun, it's tahiyyat. It's plural. So all these greetings that you can ever have, they're all for Allah. That's the first thing you have to keep in your mind. What does this word mean as well? This word means al-mulk. Al-mulk, the dominion, the creation, everything. The kingdom of Allah, long the kingdom, will baqa It also means... Eternity, the eternity of the kingdom of Allah. So you are singing, you are saying these, you're these, you're giving these greetings, you're giving these words of reverence. It means mulk, it means baqa, it means adama, it means greatness, it means grandeur. All of these are, in, are in, uh, included in just this one word, at-tahiyyat. So when we say this, 
When we say it has madlula, it has indications to all of these, these things, these meanings have to be in our minds, present in our mind. I'm saying this, I'm saying this in front of Allah because this is Allah is Malikul Muluk. He's King of Kings. There is no king over him, and he is deserving of the best tahiyya, the best salutation, the best greeting, the best words of reverence. We are expressing this now to Allah. At tahiyyatu lillah, lillah. Allah. So you're mentioning Allah's name. This is so. And bear again here in mind. Bear in mind. I'm talking about assuming the position of a slave. What does a slave say in the court? I'm saying at tahiyyat So that's the first. And then at tahiyyat lillahi wa tayyibatu. At tahiyyat lillahi wa salawatu wa salawat. The next is salawat. You're saying three words it at salawat. What does salah mean? Now salah has load, lots of meanings. And here again, we pass it in our minds and not know what it means. And in fact, some people even use it to corrupt our understanding of, salah, of, of what it actually means. All we know is that salah is the, 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 the five daily prayer we, we pray. But that's not the only meaning of salah. Salah also means dua. Salah means dua. It means supplication. And a dua mukhul ibadah. Dua is the core of your ibadah. So Allah, when, when we say a salat, all prayers, everything we do. So just as we said, all the tahiyyat, all the words of reverence is for Allah. Whatever any king has in this world, Allah is Malikul Muluk. So he is deserving of all of those and more. Because he is most, he is the highest of all overall. And then as salawat also is for Allah. The five daily prayer is for Allah. As salatu lillah. As salawatu lillah. Dua is for Allah. So we do not ask anyone else. In this is tawheed. When we say salah here, lillah, because at tahiyyatu lillah, as salawatu lillah. This is all about Allah, it's about tawheed, that we don't go around asking others now, because we have just said in salah, iyyaka na'budu wa iyyaka nasta'een. You alone we worship and you alone we ask for help. That is tawheed. We are asking Allah. We, our heart is focused to you and you alone deserve worship. At salawat. And then salah means rahmah. Rahmah, and this is the, what I read earlier, is that also means rahmah. You salli alaykum, that Allah you salli alaykum. Then, you know, I, I've seen people confusing Muslims, but because they are not, they, they do not know that this meaning, this word has multiple meanings. They confuse Muslims with it. When it's used for Allah, when salah, when the word salah is used for Allah, it means that Allah's rahmah, mercy is poured on you. His kindness is, his ni'am, he's, he's pouring his mercy on you. When this word is used by Angels, it means dua for mercy for you. That is what it. And when it means when it's from us, it is from iba. It is ibadah. It is worship. That's what. That's the difference of the meanings, because Arabic is a language that has multiple layers of meaning. Allah didn't choose this language w without knowing. Allah Subhanahu wa Taala knows the depths of every language in the world, and He chose Arabic for the final message. And through it, you can see that as the more we understand more about the world and also about ourselves, we can see that the meanings are deeper than we understand. And they keep opening. More and more of these meanings keep opening because they are layer upon layer upon layer. At-tahiyyatu lillahi wa salawatu wa tayyibat The next word, tayyibat. At-tayyib. What does tayyib mean? When you're in jalsa, when you're in tashahud, what did I mean? Am I talking about some restaurant? I'm saying tayyib. No. I'm talking about food? No. At-tayyibat here is what? Purity. That all things that are pure. Things that are pure, that is for Allah. And there are two. Two categories of purity. That, that, that is deserving. That Allah is the only one. That Allah only accepts. Allah tayyib. Wa la yaqbalu illa tayyib. That Allah is pure. Ever. Allah is completely pure. And he does not accept anything that is pure. Except that it's pure. So purity, my salah should be pure. My life now that I'm moving here, I need to make my life pure. I'm saying after salam, I will move into my world and my clothes has to be pure, halal. My food has to be halal. That is purity. Because Allah only accepts pure, purity. So I'm reminding myself here and I'm saying that tayyibat, it's for Allah. That Allah only accepts tayyib. And for that, I'm reminded and I'm saying the, the reverence of a tayyibatu lillah.
that at-tayyibat, the good, pure things in the world, that I, my actions, my speech, good, at-kalam at tayyib the good speech, the pure speech, the good speech, wal a'mal tayyib the good actions all are for Allah and for no one else. That this is the, the, this is the reminder. These are the meanings, and these are just we are scratching the surface of these meanings. But we should know that when we sit in tashahud, it is not a place to prepare for the running out of salah. It is a place to culminate your salah to get the best reward out of the salah. So we have done today haqqullah. This is the right of Allah in tashahud, that to salute Him with heart and words focused on what we are saying inshallah we'll continue haqqun nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam next week in this position wa jazakumullahu khayra wa salamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh tabarakallah